Hey everyone, Deep Fried Paint here. God, it feels so good to talk to you guys again. I know my uploading schedule has been a bit different from what I said it would be in my 1k subscriber video, and I genuinely apologize. It, I know it's no excuse. My dad and I are still hunting for an apartment. We've been motel hopping all summer. I'm literally recording in the library right now. <laughs> Once I get settled down somewhere, things should be easier so I can create better content more consistently. So, on to the main event I wish to discuss. Is game art right for you? I have been a student at Ringling going on three years now. I'm a rising junior, and I have seen students switch majors and drop out entirely. So, in order to help out people coming in, I just wanted to give you guys some pointers so that way you can make the best choice for you when you come to Ringling. You get exactly what you need to get the job you want to be in because it's pretty pricey here. It, you shouldn't be swapping around too much. It could be dangerous financially. First thing you should probably weigh in before you even consider the major is the career field in general. Game design is still a fast-paced pilgrimage. Everything is changing, racing to be the new fresh thing out there. Technology evolves, ideas blossom, however not everything is cake and ice cream. It's a very competitive industry as well, it's a given. We live in a beautiful time where indie games can compete with timeless big name companies. I never thought in my wildest dreams I wouldn't see an indie game become so successful that you can find their merchandise in stores like Walmart. That is insane and has been thought to be impossible for the longest time. This point being that it is still a hardworking and fast paced environment. Employees have to keep their skills up to date as much as possible to keep themselves from slipping through the cracks. And game companies often have crunch times which can be stressful on staff. If you enjoy the idea of a challenging workflow where you are always learning new things, then Game Art is indeed where you need to go. Now that we've chewed on the appetizer, now onto the main course. Where do you see yourself going in Game Art? Have you seen all the possible jobs out there? Do you know where you want to put yourself in? You know where you want to be a part of it? Because depending on your answer, the game art major may not be where your education lies. Now before you go shouting sacrilege, let me explain. Let's say you wed yourself in the workflow of early stages of game creation. You want to be in the early concept stages, drawing worlds, creatures, and characters that the modelers use for reference. If that is where you want to be, then chances are you might want to come to Ringling as an illustration major. You will get more knowledge for that kind of workflow and process in that division. Let's also say that you maybe want to make the teasers or short animations for video games. That would require a computer animation course of study instead. You may think that you can do that in the game art field, but not quite. It's a completely different team in charge of those shorts in most cases. For example, let's take a look at the numerous videos Riot has done for League of Legends. Notice how the style kind of fluctuates from clip to clip? That's because Riot works with outside animation studios on those projects, not their in-house game design staff. It is a different discipline entirely. One interesting perk about pursuing the other majors is if you find that you don't want to be in the game art bit of it, you can easily apply your talents to computer animation and illustration studios. It's not, it's not wasted. That's great. I know what you were thinking. What if that's not for me? What if I want to be the one who can point to a game and say, I made that thing right there, or I programmed this to happen? Then the game art major is indeed where you want to pursue your goals. You will have projects where you get a little taste of every workflow opportunity that the game art field has to offer. That way, in your spare time, you can choose one that you enjoy the most and specialize in it. For example, I had no idea where I wanted to go, even into my sophomore year. Dabbling a bit more, I found that I wanted to go into particle effects. I have three personal tips based off of my experience at Ringling and in game art, and hopefully you will be able to apply them to yourself when you're here or in any game art college. Firstly, time management is crucial. It is better on you as a whole to step away from your work, eat and sleep, and then come back with fresh eyes than to just 
rush and stress all hours of the night. I have seen it firsthand. Students getting physically ill because they waited last minute on their work and pulled three to four consecutive all-nighters. Teachers spot it as well because in most cases, the work itself looks rushed. You will deliver better projects to your class if you pace yourself, use your time wisely, and get the rest you need in order to function. Because, let's face it, if you get sick from pulling all-nighters, it defeats the purpose. You will miss days of class anyway. Secondly, treat every project like it could be a portfolio piece. You usually don't hit portfolio building projects until junior year, but if you play your cards right and make some top quality stuff, giving it your all each and every go, you could have a hefty portfolio at the end of sophomore year. Which is awesome because come junior year, you will begin to apply for internships and job opportunities with numerous companies that visit the school. And finally, above all else, you have to listen. Every project has a critique here at Ringling. At the end and in the middle for progress updates. These professors are veterans of the workforce. They know what the field needs and wants. They may come off blunt, they won't sugarcoat anything, but they certainly won't leave you in the dark or give you false information. Listen to them and what they say in critiques. I have seen students argue with professors now and then. Now, teachers have no problem with a mild debate, but if it's becoming too emotional and an attack on the teacher, it doesn't end well. I have seen a student argue that they were not getting their money's worth on their crits because the teacher had a wrong version of the project when they were in the fault because they submitted it too late. That's a big no-go. Don't be embarrassed if you get called out on something. We all make mistakes. Take it in stride, reflect, learn from it, and apply it on the next project. These teachers here are some of the best I have ever seen. If you need a full-blown refresher or just a second pair of eyes to glance over your work, they are here for you. Your peers are too. It's a good idea to find a nice cluster of individuals you trust to bounce ideas around with, get inspired, get motivated. If you follow these tips, I'm certain that you will do just fine. I promise. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a couple of video ideas in the works. You should see some more stuff about that in the future. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I hope you guys have a good one.